Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Piraka Nursing Studio. In this video, we will be learning about Silverman Anderson score to assess respiratory distress among newborn or infants. Let's start with introduction. The Silverman Anderson score is a clinical assessment tool used to evaluate respiratory distress and its severity in newborn babies. It is a quick yet easy tool that can be used for preterm and term babies. Let's talk about the history and development of this tool. It was developed in the year 1956 by Dr. William A. Silverman and Dr. Neil G. Anderson. This tool was developed as there was a need for a standardized objective and reliable tool to assess the severity of RDS in preterm and term babies. Now let's discuss the components of Silverman Anderson score. It comprises of five components, namely upper chest retractions, lower chest retractions, cephoid retractions, nasal flaring, and expiratory grunt. Let's understand these components one by one. First comes the upper chest retractions. It refers to the inward movement of the chest wall specifically the upper chest area that is the area above the nipple line during inhalation this happens when accessory muscles of respiration such as sternocleidomastoid and scalene muscles contract to help expand the lungs then comes the lower chest retractions it refers to the inward movement of the lower chest wall specifically the intercostal spaces below the nipple line during inhalation. This happens when the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles contract to help expand the lungs. Then comes the cephoid retractions. It refers to the inward movement of the cephoid process during inhalation. Cephoid process is the lower part of the sternum. This happens when the diaphragm and other respiratory muscles contract to help expand the lungs. Then comes the nasal flaring. It refers to the widening of the nostrils during inhalation, which is a normal response to increased respiratory effort. However, in the context of respiratory distress, nasal flaring is an abnormal finding that indicates increased work of breathing. The last component that we have is the expiratory grunt. It refers to a low-pitched guttural sound made by a newborn or infant during exhalation. This sound is produced by the partial closure of the glottis, which is an opening between vocal cords during expiration, which increases the pressure in the lungs and helps to maintain lung closure. Now let's move on to the scoring criteria. Silverman Anderson score ranges between 0 to 10. 0 being the minimum and 10 being the maximum score. We need to keep this in mind that lower the score, lower is the risk of RDS, whereas if the score is higher, greater will be the risk of respiratory distress. Let's understand the Silverman Anderson score table. For every component, score of 0, 1 and 2 will be given. First component is the upper chest retractions. If the upper chest synchronizes with abdomen, score 0 will be given. If upper chest lags compared to abdomen, score 1 will be given. If there is a seesaw movement of chest and abdomen, score 2 will be given. Then comes the lower chest retractions. If there are no retractions, score 0 will be given. If there are just visible retractions, score 1 will be given. If retractions are marked, score 2 will be given. The next component we have is the xiphoid retractions. If no retraction seen below xiphoid process, score 0 will be given. If visible retractions are there, score 1 will be given. If retractions are marked, score 2 will be given. Then comes the nasal flaring. If there are no signs of widening of nasal opening or nostrils, score 0 will be given. If nasal flaring is just visible, score 
one will be given and if nasal flaring is marked score two will be given the last component is the expiratory grunting if there is no evidence or sign of expiratory grunt score zero will be given if the expiratory grunt is audible with stethoscope score one will be given if the expiratory grunt is audible with naked ear or without stethoscope score two will be given now let's understand the interpretation of score obtained from silverman anderson table if the score obtained is zero it means there is no sign of respiratory distress if the score falls between 1 to 3 it suggests mild respiratory distress if the score falls between 4 to 6 it refers to moderate respiratory distress and if the score falls between 7 to 10 it suggests severe respiratory distress and the infant or the newborn may require immediate medical attention now let's briefly understand the treatment regime for mild moderate and severe rts if the score falls between 0 to 3 this means that the newborn is having mild or no respiratory distress this means that the newborn requires continuous vitals monitoring also sometimes may require oxygen therapy if the score falls between 4 to 6 this suggest that the newborn is having moderate respiratory distress this level of distress may require more aggressive interventions such as cpap that is continuous positive airway pressure and if the score falls between 7 to 10 this means that the newborn is having severe respiratory distress or impending respiratory failure so in this case immediate resuscitative measures like intubation and mechanical ventilation will be required to provide adequate respiratory support also continuous monitoring of vital signs including heart rate respiratory rate oxygen saturation blood pressure and arterial blood gas monitoring may be required now let's talk about the clinical significance of silverman anderson score this score helps in the identification of the respiratory distress at the earliest the score also provides a standardized way to assess respiratory distress allowing healthcare providers to quickly identify infants who require close monitoring or intervention this score acts as a major tool to evaluate the severity of respiratory distress this helps clinicians to evaluate severity and guide the decision making about treatment and management to tackle the respiratory distress among infants then comes the progress monitoring of the respiratory distress this score can be used to monitor infant's progress over time the last significance of this tool is the prediction of the outcomes the score has been shown to predict outcomes such as need for mechanical ventilation or the risk of mortality in this video we learned about the silverman anderson score its component interpretation and clinical significance so this was all about the video thanks for watching